Hey everybody, it's Comic Crack, and I am back from a comic convention that we had in town here today. Uh, right close by my house, we seem to be living in a, a good area of town as far as some of these things go. Um, right near me is a flea market called Thirsty's Flea Market and a lot of those guys that have booths there they've been putting on this mini convention for the past couple of years I've only been to two or three now maybe only two this might have only been the second time I've been um, but they're always really great because it's it's just smaller vendors some guys who don't sell anywhere else but here or they do some online stuff or over the phone stuff they don't have businesses of their own they're just working these little conventions so you get to see some stock that you don't normally get to see, uh, especially if you end up going to the big comic convention. Uh, the big comic convention group of people that put on this C4 convention, they uh, have done this the past couple of years, the past couple of times apparently that when they find out when this comic convention is, they always go a week earlier. So last Sunday, Father's Day, they decided to have one at the same venue, the Viscount, Viscount Gort Hotel and it was free admission to get in, but from what I heard from some people that I was talking to there and somebody I ran into there, which I'll tell you about in a sec, uh, it was apparently no good. Um, not a lot of comics, even though it was free to get in, kind of a waste of time. Um, they're really creating a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, especially the, the core group of people who you end up seeing at the smaller convention repeatedly um, and some of those smaller vendors People are getting kind of ticked off at them, like to go out of their way to try to fuck around and mess up the business for these smaller guys. And I mean, you know, it's it's who's to say that a, people who didn't show up today spent all their money at the C4 convention last weekend? Who knows? It was Father's Day, so chances are they weren't too busy there either on that day. But it, just the idea of it is kind of is kind of shitty. It's it's such a small city. Um, everybody in that world, they know each other, the dealers and the guys who own the stores, everybody knows each other. Um, one of the shops I like to go to is uh, Galaxy Comics. They refused on principle to have a table at either because they just didn't want to get involved with kind of this petty bickering bullshit. Um, it's, like, it's like high school, sometimes you overhear stuff, I overhear conversations at Thirsty's Flea Market from some of these vendors bad mouthing them and I'm sure it goes reverse too. Um, it's just, you know, it's unfortunate that it has to happen in a small town like this. Um, everybody can go out there and make some money. But that said, I do like supporting the underdog and the little guy. So I'd been saving up for this. I didn't have a lot of money saved up. I think I had a, I had a budget of $80 or $85 rather. It was $5 to get in and then $80 to buy some books. Um, I think I spent, I spent a little bit more than that. I went over a little bit, but only by like 15 bucks. Uh, so I still spent around $100, including admission, which is not bad. Um, and I made some really good scores. And I ran into our YouTube friend, Garrett, uh, Comic Guy comic guy Rules, who was in the same town as me. We had been in touch a little bit, uh, just kind of saying, hey, I'm going to this convention. Are you going to go? Um, I went. I got there a little earlier than he did, but he eventually showed up with his uh, family as well. So we got to hang out and chat for a little bit on a couple of times back and forth and got a little photo opportunity, which was kind of cool. Uh, super nice guy. I mean, you know if you've seen his videos, um, what he's into and uh, he had a pretty good success at this one. He said, uh, when I first ran into him, I had already been there for about an hour and a half digging. I think I was there for like two and a half, three hours total, which was great. Um, he had said when I first ran into him that he'd already taken a big box of comics back to his car, so I think uh, he had a lot of success. And he was the one that was telling me that he went last weekend um, free to get in, but he said, I don't even think I spent $10 because he said there just wasn't comics there. It just wasn't fun, you know. It was just something that I could have done not going at all, you know. So, um... It's unfortunate. So hopefully these guys with a little bit of money because it wasn't terribly busy there and all the vendors I was talking to they said well it's been okay it hasn't been too bad. I hope that they made out. I hope everybody made out okay. I hope everybody ended up making a little bit of money or at least enough to keep coming back um, keep putting these on because I'll go every single time with my uh, meager dollars in my pocket to buy some things. 
Um, I had a blast. I didn't go with special sexy lady friend or my kids. The past couple of times we've gone digging for things, uh, they all get bored really fast now, which completely understandable. My son doesn't even really like digging through boxes as much as, as he used to. Um, he was never terribly into it, but he gets really bored and it's just so then you're digging through boxes and you've got these this family hanging on your shoulder and they're not saying it to their credit they're not saying hey hurry up we want to go but you know that that's what they're thinking it's like this is boring I'm so bored so this time I specifically said I wanted to go on my own obviously I extended the invitation if you guys do want to come I'm not gonna stop you but I prefer to go on my own because I just want to dig I just want to spend time digging hang out with Garrett for a little bit, see who else is there, kind of chat with people and not feel rushed. And that's exactly what happened because like I said, three hours later, I walked out with my books and fully content. I really felt like this was the first convention in a while that I've actually really got to dig and find stuff and find good deals. I think I got great deals on all this stuff. Um, so when I first walked in, I just kind of looked at the room and headed to one of the corners to start and just kind of wound my way through it. Um, and the very first place I started at had a great deal. They had about five or six boxes underneath the table where it was buy 15 books for $5. There was other tables that had buy 15 books for $10. Um, was it $5 or $10? I can't remember. Anyway. So that was the first place I hit, so spending five or ten dollars right off the bat and walking away with 15 books was great. Um, it was really great because I managed to find a couple of things I've been looking for for quite a while. Um, finish, I finished off one mini-series with that one, uh, close to finishing off another series, finding a couple of books from that. Um, found my Daredevil books and found some other books, so uh, let's have a look. Uh, so I'm reading Frank Miller's and Bill Sienkiewicz's uh, Electra Assassin. And um, when I was talking to Damien, it, this book came up as well, Ronin, Frank Miller's Ronin. Um, I read it digitally, but uh, I found the graphic novel, a nice thick one for four bucks. Uh, so I picked that one up. It's in really, really nice shape. Um, there's a little look at the interiors. It's it's art uh, drawn and written by uh, Frank Miller. Very cool. Uh, it was one of those things that kind of took me by surprise when I was reading it. I didn't expect uh, I didn't expect it to be what it is. Um, not a complaint because I really enjoyed it, and it's going to be great to read it in this form now too, in this format as well too. Uh, so that was a really really nice score. That was right near the end. Somebody had it buried in a box. Uh, so four bucks was well spent there. Um, a guy that I've dealt with at Thirsty's Flea Market a few times, really nice guy, just this crotchety old man, you know, but I've always gotten along with him. We always have kind words for each other and he always gives me a deal on stuff. Um, this time he didn't and I didn't push it. Usually I, I, I offer uh, less of a price. This time I was, I was happy to pay 10 bucks for it. He had a few from the DC Comics library uh, inside it says that it's from um, the first printing uh, July 2000 so this is Will Eisner's New York the big city and it's kind of magazine sized um, collection of some short stories I don't know I haven't like I said I just kind of got home from the convention so I haven't sat and looked through to see where these stories first appeared but this one has one two three four five six seven eight nine nine short stories in it uh, collected in this one volume. He had two or three other uh, from the DC Comics library of Will Eisner stuff uh, but this is the one that uh, most interested me. A couple of the other ones I think had some stories in it that I already own so I didn't want to repurchase things. Um, so that, that'll be great with my recent Will Eisner fixation. I can sit down and read all of his kind of work like this. Um, so onto the comics, so some of the deals like I said was that 15 books for f I think it was five dollars. Uh, there was one place that I've dealt with before the last time I went to this mini convention. It's this couple and today they had an unbelievable sale of 70% uh, off everything. Um, 
so I bought a few things from them. Uh, they didn't, unfortunately, they didn't have as much Daredevil. The last time I went, they had quite a few Daredevils, and I ended up buying a number of them from them, because, again, they had a pretty sweet deal on them. Uh, obviously, those have been picked clean. They seem like they're people who, this is his collection or her collection. Um, it doesn't feel like... I'm sure that they come into stuff along the way, but this really feels like this is uh, their collection. I've never seen them anywhere else. Um, didn't really have a chance to talk to them. She wasn't overly chatty when I was there, so I didn't want to push it really. But um, then there was a place that had buy one, get one free, so I ended up picking up some daredevils through them. Uh, so all in all, some really good deals. So I'll just kind of, we'll just go through the whole stack. So this first one finishes off a mini-series for me. It's uh, Starstruck, The Expanding Universe, Volume 1, Book 4. So that finishes off that one for me. Uh, this is the Black and White Collection by Elaine Lee and uh, Kaluda, William Kaluda, right? Uh, Michael, Michael William Kaluda, yeah, so Elaine Lee. Uh, I've got... This in a variety of formats. There were some color reprints. I have a magazine edition. Um, there was another edition as well. Uh, just It's just entertaining stuff. I, I have yet to read the entire series. This will give me a chance to have one of them completely done. Like I said, I'm, I'm missing a couple of issues here and there. Uh, they're not as easy to always find, so that was a really nice score to find that. Uh, one that I would love to have the entire miniseries. I've read it already digitally, but this is Winter World, number two of three. Uh, so that was a really nice score because I just don't see these around and it kind of surprises me because Eclipse, especially here, I don't know what it's like everywhere else, but um, in Winnipeg, digging for Eclipse and PC and stuff like that, there's always a huge selection of those companies' stuff. Uh, another one from Eclipse. Valkyrie. It's an Air Fighters miniseries. This is number two of three as well. Uh, so that'll be great. And with these PC and Eclipse books, I, I'm never too worried about, you know, just picking up one of a three-issue miniseries because I know I'll find them eventually. I just, I really like these PC and Eclipse books. So if I don't have it, I always end up buying it. Uh, one that I haven't heard of before, this is Silver Heels number one from PC. And then Silver Heels number three from PC as well. And I think there's two stories and a couple of stories in each of these. Yeah. Oh, that looks like a... No, it can't be. Let me see. It doesn't say. Um, let me just give you a sample of the interiors here. Yeah, it looks like this one has three stories in it. So here's a little taste of uh, Silver Heels story in that one. Um, Epic Comics found a few things from Epic Comics, and again, uh, some companies I just pick up. So any anytime I see something that looks interesting from Epic Comics, I pick it up as well. This is Martial Law number four, uh, which I, I've seen collected, but I'd really like to pick up the singles of this one as well. It's supposed to be a really, really great story. I've, I've yet to read it in any format, so that'll be exciting. Um, the Sisterhood of Steel, number one from December 1984 from Epic Comics. Uh, the Boz Chronicles from Epic Comics with a Electra Assassin ad on the back. Um, and this is something called Moon Shadow. Uh, this is number six. And this is number nine. Um, I've seen these around before, uh, but they've always been like a couple of bucks a piece and I am not as interested to sometimes pay that for it. But like I said, these ones came from that bin where it was 15 for five bucks or whatever it was. So with that price, how can you say no? Uh, Dell Ghost Stories. Mr. Tom likes uh, some scarier stories, so I picked up this one with him in mind. Uh, we'll see what it's like. I've got a couple of things from AmeriComics, but I don't have these. So this is AmeriComics number one and AmeriComics number two. And I don't know if you can really tell as much, but the coloring in these books is 
something just crazy. I don't know if it's the printing process itself or what it is, but uh, it's almost garishly colored and I love it. I think it's fantastic because it's so just, I don't know, it's so bright and the colors don't necessarily work all the time with each other. There's nothing subtle about this though in any shape. Uh, was that other picture? Yeah, this one struck me as well too. This one up there looked pretty great. So yeah, that's from AC Americomics. Um, and this character, the shade, I've got, I think, just one, or maybe I have two issues of the shade. Um, so yeah, I like the looks of that character. Uh, Blackthorn Publishing, this is Ground Pound Comics. Uh, looks like it's a one-shot, because there's no number on it. It's a little kind of underground-ish um, anthology uh, from Blackthorn. Well, I think I have a couple of Blackthorn things, but uh, we'll see what that one's like. Uh, my son is collecting, not necessarily collecting, he's, he's been showing interest the past few years in uh, the history of Marvel Universe and the characters, and same with DC, he's got some hardcover books. Uh, the other thing that I had a, a, a pretty fair sized stack of were these official handbook of the Marvel Universe, this is the deluxe edition. This one he doesn't have, and it was in that bin as well for the 15 comics for Dirt Cheap. So I picked that one up for him since he doesn't have it. Um, and then a, a series that I'm pretty close to finishing recently when I was kind of going through my comics to put into my app, um, I noticed that I'm fairly close to finishing Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. So this was in those boxes as well. So that's number 40 and number 198. Uh, I'm not sure how many it gives me to complete, but it's, it's not a hell of a lot. Um, the one that I went back for at the end, I, I, I had left and figured I can't walk away without having it. I don't see it that often. Uh, it, finishes, it finishes off the collection for me. And as an added bonus, I, I didn't say on the box itself when I brought it up to him and he told me the price, it was 50% off. And I said, oh, so is that whole box 50% off? He's like, everything that I'm selling here today is 50% off. Hell, so I ended up buying a Daredevil as well from him. Um, a pretty decent grade one for 10 bucks as opposed to 20. So this is Marvel Premiere featuring Doctor Strange number 11, the last one that I need for the Marvel Premiere Doctor Strange, which is really exciting to have that series finished. Uh, Marvel Adventure featuring Daredevil number six. Uh, I don't know much about it. I assume that it's all reprints though, which is fine. I don't mind having uh, more Daredevil reprinted or not. Uh, Giant Size Defenders, number one, which was pretty good score as well. Um, it's not in bad shape. Corner, the, the spine is a little rolled. Um, there's a bit of a tear in one corner that might have been patched up and somebody had their name written on it, but this was one of the books that was from the people that had 60% off, off of everything. So even at a cover price of $6, I got it dirt cheap. And then the Defenders number 31, one that I'm missing as well. Um, there was quite a few Death Rattle, but uh, this was the only one that was at a decent price. I think it was, I think I bought it for, I think I picked it up for, actually it was two fifty. dollars so what it would have originally been when it came out, uh, pretty nice. So this is Death Rattle number two. Uh, with, and it says on this sticker, an unpublished spirit story by Will Eisner, so that's a good one. I've got the first issue of this. Unfortunately, they only had number one and two. They didn't have number three, so I'm still one issue shy. This is Bad Girls Go to Hell. Um, there's an exploitation movie called Bad Girls Go to Hell, and this is the comic adaptation of that. I can't remember what year it's from. Let's have a quick look. What year did this come out? This says it came out in January 1992, so uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, 1992. Yeah, it looks good and, you know, very basic. You know, there's nothing uh, mind-blowing about the art by any stretch, but um, I do like picking up those. And another one that I've never seen before, too, from uh, Eros Comics. This is 
Christina Winters, Agent of Death, with a pretty fantastic plop takeoff with that uh, border and everything, even the way it's written there. Um, I actually haven't had a look through this either, so let's have a let's have a quick peek in this one. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's definitely. It's definitely adults only. Here, let me see, is there anything that I can show you in this? Uh, well, that sort of, I guess. So there you go. Agent of Death, number one, adults only, Eros Comics. So there you go, that's the kind of random, all sorts of stuff. Now we'll get into the the reason that I went, uh, every time I go to these conventions lately, it's to pick up more in my uh, continuing journey of collecting the first 300 Daredevil. Uh, I think I did pretty great. One of the places, the last place that I went to um, is a place that Garrett had told me he buys a lot of his comics from. Um, he does have pretty great deals. He's got pretty great prices. Most of it... What, hap what he'll do is he'll put uh, a little sticker, I don't know if you can see it, uh, what he says is the overstreet guide price and then what you're going to buy it for kind of thing. And on the back he's got it roughly graded as well too. So this one is very good to find from 1967, 35, issue number 35, he had it priced at $8. Um, I've seen him around before. I think I might have bought a couple of things from him before. Uh, I did end up getting a business card from him that crumpled up in my pocket a little bit because apparently you can do deals with him outside of the conventions and things. But it'll be interesting to pull out the price guides and just do a little comparison. Uh, either way, I'm fine paying. It's right in the range with these older Daredevil issues. The cheaper for me is is fine. I don't need, uh, I'm not going to be able to afford, first of all, pristine copies. And I'm completely happy with reader copies because I want to read the whole damn series. So that's issue number 35, uh, issue number 36. Uh, this one at 50% off. I never would have bought this if it wasn't 50% off. Uh, the $20 number 54 from uh, the guy I was talking about previously and it looks in pretty great shape too. I mean there's some spine ticks on the side and things like that but it's a pretty great cover and it's one that I need so uh, yeah there you go 20 bucks 10 bucks I guess. Number 55 for a grand total of three dollars which is right in the price range you know um, that's where I'm looking that's the that's the uh, kind of quality that I'm looking for. As long as it's in one piece and there's no pages missing, I'm completely happy with paying that. Uh, number 56, so this was one of the books from the buy one, get one free, because then there was another one that was $9, so two Daredevil comics for nine bucks is a sweet deal. Number 110, uh, number 113, Number 117, number 122, and number 130. So there you go, that brings me at 10 more closer to completion. I think, I think I'm now right at, uh, out of the first 300, I think I've got 200 of them now, um, which is pretty awesome. Obviously the ones that I'm missing are uh, in that first, in that first uh, one to one hundred is where most of them are from. There's a few from the one hundreds that I'm missing too, like right around the time where Frank Miller started. I'm missing some of those, uh, like introduction of, of Electra, um, his Frank Miller's first issue period, that sort of thing. Um, so, but I'm getting there. It's it's great getting these Daredevil books. Uh, I can't wait to have them all. It's, it's a lot of fun reading those early ones and then just seeing how it compares to what it is now. He was quite a different character when he started off. Um, yeah, so that's pretty awesome. I think number 31 is my earliest at this point, but uh, soon enough I have faith. So that's that. That's the comic convention hall. Um, thanks very much for watching.
and we'll see you all very soon.